So in this video, we are going to discuss the topic organic chemistry. So most of the students complain that organic chemistry is tough. So we are just going to begin with the basics of organic chemistry. From here, you will come to know uh, how to write the formulas of organic compounds. So today, we are going to discuss uh, introduction to organic compounds and the unique character, the unique characteristics of carbon, that is your tetravalency and catenation. So you have noticed uh, organic compounds like sugar, starch, glycogen, cellulose, ethane, you can see the structure here, so methane. So you'll come to know the structures and their functions also as well. So you have noticed that organic compounds uh, we require in our day-to-day -day life. And organic compounds are extremely useful to us in our daily life. For example, soaps and shampoos which we use, even perfumes. So if you read the contents in the perfume, you'll find alcohol, ethyl alcohol is mentioned there. So organic compounds are present even there, even uh, uh, the powders, insecticides, dyes, petroleum products. So these all products have organic compounds in them. So we are going to look at uh, the types of compounds here. So compounds are of two types, inorganic and organic. So inorganic compounds means those compounds which are produced from minerals and non-living sources. They are known as here inorganic. For example, copper, silicon, phosphorus, copper sulfate, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid. So these are all compounds produced from minerals. So what are organic compounds? Organic compounds are obtained from living sources like plants and animals. So there are two types of compounds, inorganic and organic. Now let's look at the meaning of organic chemistry. So the study of organic compounds is known as your organic chemistry. So this is one of the definitions. So organic means obtained from living sources like plants and animals. So these are your organic compounds. So organic chemistry means the study of organic compounds is also known as organic chemistry. So based on the fact that all organic compounds essentially contain carbon, organic chemistry is defined as the study of carbon atoms. So always remember in organic compounds, the chief constituent for organic compounds is your carbon, it's uh, carbon atoms. They form a long chain that will come across that's uh, known as your catenation also as well. So now there's a modern definition for organic chemistry. Now, organic chemistry may be defined as chemistry of hydrocarbons and their derivatives. Derivatives means OH, COH, carboxylic group, they are also known as a carboxylic group, alcohol group, aldehyde group, so they are all known as your derivatives. So what is the meaning of hydrocarbons? So hydrocarbons are compounds that are made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Now we are going to look at the unique nature of carbon atoms. So carbon atom has a valency of 4. So I am just going to show you the structure here. So this is the structure of carbon. The number of electrons present in carbon, its total number of electrons is 6, 2 here and 4 electrons in its outermost orbit. So these red dots are actually uh, electrons of carbon. So here 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now these green colors are actually electrons of this hydrogen. Hydrogen is not stable, so they form a covalent bond. So hydrogen is going to share its electron with the outermost electron of carbon. So what is the meaning of tetravalency? So the characteristics of carbon atom which in, uh, it forms four covalent bonds is called your tetravalency of carbon. So carbon's valency is four. For that reason, it is known as your tetra. Tetra means four. So I'm going to show you a, a structure here. So this is our carbon here. So I'm just going to make uh, the outermost electrons here. Just I'm going to show the Lewis dot structure, which I have already explained in the previous classes. So it has four dots. That means four electrons are present here. So hydrogen, if you look at hydrogen's atomic structure, hydrogen has only one electron in its outermost orbit. So it requires one electron to be stable, whereas this carbon needs four electrons to be stable. So this hydrogen will come here and form a bond with this electron of carbon. So this hydrogen will come here with this electron and they will form a covalent bond. Similarly, another hydrogen will come here with this electron and form a bond, covalent bond here. Here one hydrogen and one more hydrogen here with this electron. So this is the way how carbon forms a covalent bond. So this is also known as a tetravalency. It has four electrons in its outermost orbit. That's why we use the term tetravalency. So we will come across the nomenclature. So our nomenclature is methane. Actually, there's only one carbon here. So we write as meth. 
and there's a single bond that's how we write in so we'll come across this uh, in the next video when i'll start explaining you the nomenclature so this is your methane how it is formed so this is known as your tetra valency now another property for uh, for carbon is known as your catenation so what is the meaning of catenation you can see here carbon and carbon forming a long chain here so even these black colors are actually a carbon and white is your hydrogen this is your atomic structure you can find this model in the stationery also so what is the meaning of catenation the property of self-linking of atoms through covalent bonds in order to form straight branched and cyclic chains is known as your catenation so catenation means it has a unique property to link together this carbon has a unique property to link together also known as your self-linking so this is known as your catenation so i'm going to show you how catenation works so i'm going to show you the catenation so carbon has the property of self-linking this is due to uh, your electron affinity which you have done in chapter one that's periodic table you come across the electron affinity that's what's going to happen here now this electron needs to be stable in order to be octet what happens what is going to happen is now this electron of this carbon is going to form a covalent bond with this ele electron of this carbon similarly this electron will bond here this electron will bond with another electron of carbon so the, as well as this electron will bond here even this electron will bond here so you can add more carbon here also it's going to bond here that's formed a bond so you can add more carbon along with its four electrons here four valence it can bond so it can form a long chain as well so it can form chain here chain here it will become form a longest chain so this is known as your catenation the self-linking of carbon atoms through covalent bond so what happens to these remaining electrons? You can add here hydrogen because its valence is one. So you just add a hydrogen here and form a bond with this electron of this carbon. So in this way, the carbon will form the longest chain, also known as your self-linking as well as catenation. So here I'm going to show you the types of chain the carbon can form. So this is your straight chain. You can see carbon carbon forming a straight alignment here, linear. So this is known as your straight chain. So branch chain I have showed you here. So this is your branch in the tree. There are branches, isn't it? So similarly, these are your branches. So they form a straight chain as well as a branch chain. So this is known as your branch chain. Look, carbon is here. It has formed the branches here, the carbon. So always remember, always look at the carbon and how it has formed this branch. So this is known as your branched chain. So this is also one example of branch chain here. The carbon has formed its branch here as well as here. Even carbon has the property to form a cyclic chain here, also known as your closed chain or cyclic chain, the carbon carbon. So I'm going to show you here a closed chain. This is the way how carbon forms a closed chain or cyclic chain. So carbon here, so with its uh, four electrons here, one, two, I'm going to make here in this way. So two electrons here and two electrons here. Then one more carbon here, one here, so I'm just going to place dot over here. You can place anywhere here. Sometimes you can make the dot here. So this is electron dot structure. So I'm going to make one more carbon here with this dot. These four electrons here. So I just made a mistake here. So I'm going to make it here. So one, two, three, four electrons. This carbon is four electrons. This carbon, four electrons, four electrons in this way. Now these electron is going to bond with this electron of this carbon. So it will form a bond here. Now this electron will bond with this carbon and this electron will bond with this carbon. This electron will bond with this, this and this. So in this way it forms a cycle here, it forms a circle. That's why we use the term as closed chain compounds also. So what happens to these two electrons now? In these two electrons, two hydrogens will come and form a covalent bond here. So these two electrons are remaining here, so you can add here two hydrogens or here two hydrogens so similarly you do it for here 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 so this is also known as your closed chain it is closed that's how we use the term as a closed chain so what are open chained so open chained are here you don't find a circle here these are also open chained these are also open chain and this one is your closed chain compounds so in the next video i'm going to explain you the hydrocarbons the types of hydrocarbons saturated and saturated then we'll start with the nomenclature. So thank you for watching my video.